Okay, the last box has two different questions. The first question says, is it an ion, ionic, or covalent? You've got to answer that question first. Um, you've got three choices, ion, ionic, or covalent, and each of these is only going to have one of those. None of these structures are going to have two names. How do you know if it's an ion? It has a charge. So you know it's an ion without even drawing it. If the, um, at the top... If you're told to draw the Lewis structure for NH4 with a plus one charge, boom, you know it's an ion because it's got a charge on it. So you can go through and put ion on anything that has a charge. Okay, so that's the first choice. The second choice says ionic. What's the difference between an ion and an ionic compound? Ion, ionic compound is a is a cation and, and an anion okay an ion has a charge so is there anything on that sheet that's ionic yeah. it's that Na2S it's that one we've been skipping every time that is the only ionic compound on the sheet is the Na2S okay it's a metal and a non-metal that's how you know so everything else is covalent um, how do you know it's covalent, though, beyond the fact that everything else is covalent, because we've assigned the other two? They share electrons. They share electrons. Nonmetals. Non if they're made up all of nonmetals, things to the right of that stair step, that means they're covalent compounds. Okay? So the first thing you would do is go through and decide ion, ionic, or covalent. Then you answer the second question. The second question says, is the overall structure polar or nonpolar? You're only going to answer that question if you have identified the compound as covalent. Okay, so the polar, nonpolar question is only answered if we have classified it as a covalent compound. <coughs> now, there are different approaches that you can take for deciding uh, polar or nonpolar. What do you think that means, a polar compound versus a nonpolar compound? Like how reactive. It's not how reactive. It's what? It's got a positive side and a negative side. Yeah. If it's a polar compound, guys, it's got a positive side and a negative side. If it's nonpolar, that means it's all distributed evenly throughout. There's no difference in charge. Okay? So, let's go back. Um to that carbon tetrachloride again. That's the one that we drew. It's the first one we ever drew. And I told you that there's two different approaches you can take to deciding polar and nonpolar. Okay? Y'all, one approach you can take is to look for symmetry. If the molecule is perfectly symmetrical, perfectly balanced out, then it's going to be nonpolar. Okay? Do you see, like that's carbon tetrachloride drawn, here it is put together with the model kit, that is perfectly symmetrical. Therefore, carbon tetrachloride would be a nonpolar molecule. There's no charge distribution. Okay? So, keeping thinking about looking at just symmetry. Guys, what if I changed it to be CHCl3? So now it looks like that. And I didn't, here's the dots, I'll go ahead and put them on there. If I'm looking at symmetry, can you tell, wow, that's not symmetrical. One of those has been changed, so that would be a polar molecule. So okay. Is all yeah, all evenly distributed or perfectly symmetrical, that's going to be nonpolar. If they're not evenly distributed, or maybe you'd say asymmetrical, that's going to be polar. Okay? So... I said one approach you can take is to look at symmetry. The other approach you can take is to consider those bond dipoles and at what angle those dipoles are happening. On your test, I'm not going to ask you to draw bond dipoles. Remember what those are? Right, that's the arrows that point to the more electronegative. I'm not going to ask you to do that, but in order to decide polar and nonpolar, you might want to do that on some of them. So. If I drew bond dipoles on carbon tetrachloride, y'all, they would be drawn like so, okay? Those bond dipoles all cancel each other out. 
So that's still a nonpolar molecule. But now if I go to the one on the right and I draw bond dipoles, I'm not going to have one on that carbon-hydrogen bond. So those dipole, dipoles are like vectors. If you've had physics, you know vectors have a magnitude and they have a direction, right? Yeah. Okay, so the one on the right, these vectors, they don't cancel each other out. So that's still a polar molecule. Okay, so you've got two approaches. You can look at symmetry or you can look at the bond dipoles and the angles that those are happening. Okay? Is that clear as mud? Let's see how clear it is. Let's go through them. Go ahead. Okay. What if we like on HF, right? Okay, let's answer two questions. First, is it an ion? Is it ionic or covalent? covalent. It's covalent. Um, I'm not sure how to answer that because I'm not sure what you're thinking. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Symmetrical means the same type of atom. Okay, like think about that carbon tetrachloride one. Okay, so if you're going to look at symmetry, look at symmetry. When we drew a bond dipole on that one, guys, that's what we drew, right? One pointing towards the F. Is there anything that's canceling out that one vector? Mm -mm. What you think, polar or nonpolar? That's a polar molecule. It's not symmetrical because it's an H and an F. It only has one bond dipole. So HF, y'all, obviously has a negative side to it over here where the fluorine is. Look at all those dots. That's a negative side. And it obviously has a positive side over here where the H is. There's a charge distribution in that molecule. Oxygen. Is it an ion, ionic, or covalent? It's covalent. Is it polar or nonpolar? Nonpolar. Why? Because it's just both oxygens. It's totally symmetrical. I didn't even draw a bond dipole on it. Right? So it's a nonpolar mm -hmm. molecule. Carbon monoxide. Ion, ionic, or covalent? Covalent. Polar. NH4 plus. Ion, ionic, or covalent? It's an ion, so I don't have to answer the next question, right? But just for fun, pretend it was NH4 and it was a neutral charge, okay? So pretend we didn't have these brackets on it and it was just NH4. Would that be polar or nonpolar? It'd be nonpolar. See how it's tetrahedral, perfectly symmetrical? It would be nonpolar, okay? But we don't answer it on that one. What about this one, Na2S? It's ionic. We don't have to worry about polar or nonpolar because ionic is really the extreme of polarity. Okay, it's a positive and negative. What about this one? Is it an ion, ionic, or covalent? The SO3? It's covalent. It's covalent. I think it's polar. Why? Uh, because it's got the double bond. Okay, because one of them's a double and two of them are single. Okay, but remember when we drew that one, y'all might not remember because it's been a while ago that we drew that one. I told you guys it didn't matter if you put the double bond on this one or if you put it on the one on the right or if you put it on the one on the top right? because it's still the same molecule. And actually what you have, if you look back up at the top of that handout, when A said draw the best Lewis structure residences, you see that word residences? We haven't talked about that, but we are now. What resonance means, y'all, is that that double bond, it is on that oxygen that we've got it drawn on, but guess what? That double bond's also right here, and that double bond is also right here. That double bond is moving around that molecule, okay? So that means 
that we don't treat that SO double bond any different than we treat the SO single bonds. So it's nonpolar. It's nonpolar non because they're all S sulfur bonded to oxygen. <coughs> if there was something different, you wouldn't have that double bond moving around. We're going to see that in a later one. Okay, what's next? ClO2 with a negative one charge. Is that an ion? Is it ionic or covalent? It's an ion. But just for practice, if we pretend it wasn't an ion, so in doing so, I'm going to erase all this. We couldn't draw bond dipoles on that, okay, because we can't tell between Cl and O. Do you think that's a polar molecule? It would be a polar molecule. Yeah. Guys, bent molecules are always going to be polar. If it's bent, it's polar. The reason is kind of in why it's bent. Like if I take this one I've put together here. What are those little sticks up there without any kind of atom on them? Those are lone pairs of electrons. That means it's always got a very negative side. Those electrons are forcing those bonds to be bent. Okay? All right, the next one, sulfite. It's an ion. Okay, that's what we're going to do. We're going to pretend. Okay, uh, so in pretending, I'm going to erase the charges, and I'm going to pretend that it wasn't an ion, that it was covalent. I need a bigger... Look. This right here, it's, a trig it's tetrahedral because of the, the three bonds and the lone pair. But the shape is trigonal pyramidal or trigonal pyramidal, however you want to say that. What's this little stick on the top mean? A lone pair. It's just a lone pair. What do you think? Polar. That's polar. You see that? Because you've got all these negatives on this side. So anytime there's a lone pair on the central... Atom, it would be polar? Yes. Anytime there's a lone pair on the central atom, okay. it's very likely a polar molecule. Okay. There's some little few exceptions, like if you look back at the O2, because mm -hmm. there wasn't even a dipole. Okay? okay? Yeah, but there's a lone pair on the central atom that's probably polar. <laughs> okay. CH2O. Is it an ion, ionic, or covalent? It's covalent. Is there resonance here? What does resonance mean, y'all? Resonance means that that double bond's moving all around. Is there resonance on this one? No. Because hydrogens can't double bond, and you can only have resonance if you have the same two atoms. Like oh, before, it was SO, SO, SO. We're not going to have resonance when it's CO and then a CH. Is it polar or nonpolar? Polar. It's polar. Why? Because it doesn't, have it doesn't have resonance. What else might you say? Why? Hydrogen, two okay, so it's not symmetrical when you got two hydrogen. It's got one dipole arrow. All of those are the reasons that we'd come up with it being polar. Does everybody follow? Okay. Uh, CO2, it's covalent, yeah? Is it polar or nonpolar? Nonpolar. Why? It's symmetrical. It's linear, and those dipoles are pulling right opposite each other, aren't they? In tug of war, those two would cancel each other out. Yeah? They would, because they're the same. Um, you got to be careful, though. I want to caution you because I don't want this to happen on the test. Um, 
on your sheet, the first column on there, water is drawn for you. But guys, when you on your sheet, it's drawn bent. But it's very likely that when you guys draw water, that you would draw it like this. Okay? And when you would draw the bond dipoles, you're going to draw them pointing towards the oxygen. And you're going to look at that and you're going to say, well, the dipoles are pointing straight into each other and it looks symmetrical. And you're going to call it nonpolar, but that's polar. Why? <coughs> right. Is it really a linear molecule? No. no. Water is bent, but I've drawn it linear. Remember when we were doing shapes, I said, be careful because you're going to draw them straight across, but it's not linear. How do you know it's bent? Because it's a tetrahedral electronic geometry. Two of them are bonding. It's a bent molecule. Yeah? Okay. Thiocyanate. That's an ion. Don't worry, we're not going to pretend on that one, okay? Nitrate. It's an ion. Nitrogen dioxide, covalent. What is it? Polar. Why? It's bent. Bent molecules are always polar. Is there resonance there? Yep. H2O2? Covalent and polar. How do you know it's polar? Yeah. It's bent. C2H2? Covalent and nonpolar. How do you know it's nonpolar? Okay, it's symmetrical. Did you draw any dipoles on it? No, so it can't be polar if there's no dipoles. 